if you have some general complex function f, its real and imaginary parts are not related. But if you have an analytic function, we do have a relationship between the real and imaginary part of f, the Cauchy-Riemann equations. This means that the real part of the uh, or the imaginary part of an analytic function determines the entire function up to a constant. They are harmonic conjugates. In this video, you will learn how you can find your analytic function if, for example, only the real part is given. So, uh, we are looking for some function f of z, analytic. Uh, we write as usual f of e equals u plus i times v. Uh, we set z equals x plus i y, as usual. And now only the u part is given. So, we have a u e equals e to the power minus i y times cosine x plus x squared minus y squared plus 2 times x y. Furthermore, f of 0 is given just to specify uh, the constant later on. Now we would like to find the full function f. So we want to find v. Well, how can we find v? We can use the cauchy riemann equations. Because we know ux has to be equal to vy. So we compute ux first. That's what we do over here. Uh, the derivative of e to the power minus i y times cosine x yields the uh, minus sine x times the exponent. Uh, 2x from the x squared. Uh, this term vanishes uh, because you're differentiating with respect to x and uh, to uh, y. Well, this ux has to be equal to vy due to Cauchy Riemann e e conditions. So we have vy given. So how can we find v? Well, we integrate with respect to y, but keep in mind it's a partial derivative. So we integrate with respect to y while treating x as a constant. So we integrate the first term with respect to y. Uh, we have e to the power minus i y times sine x. Sin x is now a constant. Integrate with respect to y. We get e to the power minus y times sine x. Uh, integrate 2x yields 2x times y. Integrate 2y yields uh, y squared. Uh, so here we have our v of x and y. And remember, we integrate, so we have an integration constant, k, but this k can still depend on x, because we integrate with respect to y while keeping x constant. So we have a constant k depending on x. So how are we going to determine that one? Well, uh, we know uh, that uh, vx has to be a equal to minus uy. Now we have our v here, so we can compute vx over here uh, by differentiating a v. So we get the uh, cosine x times e to the power minus i y at 2y. The uh, y squared vanishes now because we differentiate with respect to x. And uh, 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 when we differentiate k, we get k prime. Furthermore, we can also compute uy because we have u over here. So uy yields minus e to the power minus y times cosine x from this one. Uh, this term vanishes. This gives it minus 2y. And differentiating this gives it plus 2x. So there we have our uy over here. Now we know uh, vx equals minus uy. Well, this term and that term are already the same. Uh, and then uh, vx equals minus uy. So this term and this term are already the same. So what we are left with is k prime has to be equal to minus 2x over here. So we can determine k by integrating k prime equals minus 2x, so k equals minus x squared plus a constant c, and now this c is the constant not depending on x or y anymore. And there we have our v. So in principle, now we know our f because we have u and v, we know f equals u plus i times v. Well, it's nice to write everything in terms just of z, because we know uh, an analytic function f of z depends on z, and now we have u of x and y plus i times v of x and y. So let's rewrite that just in terms of z only. So plug in u, here we have u over here, plus i times v. We have our v here, so we plug in our v over there. And then we start to combine. 
well, what you could do, you know z equals x plus i y, z bar equals x minus i bar. So you could do x equals z plus z bar over 2 and y equals z minus z bar over 2i and substitute everything. You will get there. But it's easier if you look a bit better, you can combine terms in a smart way. Because here we have our e to the power minus i with the cosine x and the sine x. Over here. And then we see x squared minus y squared plus 2xi. Uh, and we recognize that because x squared plus 2xi minus y squared will be x plus i y squared. So that will be z squared. And what we are left with is our 2xy and a y squared minus x squared. Let's put it here. And then you see you can factor out the minus i and you get the x squared plus 2xi minus y squared. So again, z squared. And you still have your constant i times c. And then simplify a bit. Uh, here we have a z squared and minus i times z squared. So those are those two terms. And then we have e to the power of minus i y times cos x plus i times sin x. Well, cos x plus i times sin x, that's Euler formula, yields e to the power i x. And then you can take out a factor of uh, i in the exponential, and then you get here, e to the power i, x plus i y, and you again recognize the z. So well, what you finally have is e to the power i z plus 1 minus i times z squared plus i times c. Well, finally, in the last step, you can determine your constant c, because we had this additional constraint, f of 0 equals 1 plus 3i, so plug in a 0. Then you see uh, that e to the power i z yields 1, one, 1 minus i times z squared will be 0, so i times c has to be equal to 3i, uh, so c has to be equal to 3. And finally, you have your f of z over here.